right, good morning. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a graph using a spreadsheet of any sample data that you have. I'm going to do this in two parts. I'm going to do the first part is going to show you how to graph the data and uh, clean up all the axes. And then for the second part, I'm going to show you how to do error bars. If you are in a class that doesn't have to do error bars, you can stop at that point. So to start a graph, you want to do a spreadsheet. Uh, most students use Google Sheets. So I'm going to base it on this. You can also do it in Microsoft Excel. So if I'm in my apps part for Google, I'm going to click on Sheets. All right, so I'm going to make up some hypothetical data, um, but the rules follow. So when you go to make a graph, you need two columns at least, one for your X variable, one for your Y variable. And the rule is you always put your X variable in the left column. So I'm going to do my two columns as B and C. That's just the way I like it. It doesn't matter which columns you choose. And if I go up here and stretch it out, I can stretch it out for reasons I'll see later. So the first thing you want to do is put your heading for the axes of your graph. So if, let's say in a lab, I'm going to do uh, bounce height. I'll do the bounce height and the drop height. So my X variable is the drop height. So I'm going to put drop height. And then I'm going to put the variable that I want it to stand for. And then I'm going to put the units. And when, if I do that all right here, it will show up as a label on my x-axis, which is nice. I don't have to change that. And then over here, I'm going to do bounce height. And I'm going to do a B, and again, in centimeters. Okay, so now I'm going to enter my data. I don't have actual data. That's all right. I'm just going to do hypothetical data. So I'm going to say 100. 50, 120, 90, uh, 60, and let's say 30. And then for my bounce height, I'm just going to go, um, let's see, 130, 110. Ooh, this might not work out as well as I like. So I might change that in a minute. i got to think about this. Okay, so. I'm going to think about this, I'm going to pause, and then I might change things when you come back. So I did end up changing my data just a little bit, but that shouldn't change what you have before you if you're doing bounce height and drop height. Okay, so once I have my data, it's pretty straightforward. I want to click and drag and highlight not only the numbers, but the headings. And let me say one more thing about the numbers. Don't put units in these two or five rows. You already have the units up there. If you put letters in these cells, it won't work, the graph won't work. So anyway, I've highlighted these. I want to go up to Insert. I want to go to Chart. And by default, it makes a scatter plot, which is exactly what I want. So the rest of what we have to do is just kind of formatting. So before I do that, I'm going to click out of the Chart Editor. I'm going to come back to that later. Okay. And I want to move this chart to a different sheet because right now it's just sitting over my data, and I don't want that. So as soon as I click somewhere to chart in this margin, I see these three dots come up. So I'm going to click on that, move to its own chart. Very nice. So now I want to start editing this chart. So I'm going to go up to where it says Edit Chart. And there's a lot of different things I can do. When I go to Edit Chart, there's two tabs. There's Setup and Customize. Most of what I want to do is in Customize. So when I go to Customize, so let me tell you the things I want to accomplish before I show you how I do each one. I want to change my heading slightly. There's too much information here because it just copied what I put in my headings. Notice that my heading showed up right here in my axes. That's great. I don't have to go in and change that. If you look at my first data point, it starts right here, which almost seems like it's zero. That's not correct. So I got to change the x-axis. I got to extend it back to zero. I don't like the fact that my last data point is right at the edge of my graph. So I'm going to extend the graph a little bit. And that can be done very easily. I'm going to add more grid lines. Um, and if I'm going to add error bars, I'm going to make the data points smaller. All right, so let's do each one. So first I'm going to change this. So if I look at all my choices, right, if I scroll, I see chart and axis title. So that's pretty obvious. I want to do chart title. So right now it's bounce height versus that. So I can just go up here and in this dialog box. And I'm just going to get rid of the centimeters and all. I don't need that. I just want to say bounce height versus drop height. And maybe I add for, uh, let's say, top flight golf ball. You might have a different brand for your particular lab. You would want to put that there. All right, that's straightforward enough. 
So I'm going to click out of this. Next, I want to add more grid lines. There's, there's just two big of grid lines here. So I want to add some between each on the Y axis and the X axis. So if I go down to the bottom, it says grid lines and ticks. And that's open. Now I just got to scroll down. So what I want, by default, they give you major grid lines. That's these. I want minor grid lines as well. Okay, they barely show up. So where it says grid line color, auto, they automatically do that. Uh, I'm not even sure what they do. I'm just going to go to a light gray. At least it's a little bit more pronounced. And if I go to major grid lines, I'm going to choose the same light gray. Okay. Now, here's the thing. They, by default, added two grid lines here. So if I count from 50 to 100, i got to divide that into three chunks. Well, 50 divided by 3 is not a nice number. So I want to count by tens. I want to go 50, 60, 70, so on. So I want uh, at least five lines between here and here. So I'm going to add four rather than two. So if I add four there, now i got 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That did it for the vertical axis. In fact, if I scroll up, that's the default thing that comes up when I do grid lines and ticks. So if I want to do horizontal axis, I just click on that, go to horizontal axis, and do the same thing I did before. I'm going to change, I'm going to tick, or check minor grid lines, I'm going to change the color so it's a little bit darker, and then I'm going to put four for each one. Okay, so I've got nice looking grid lines, they're a little bit darker, they should show up on a document when you um, copy it over. Next, I want to, let's see, oh yeah, I want to change the axis, I, I can do that now. So I want to make sure this extends to zero, because I don't want this to be showing up right next to that one. So I'm going to click out of grid lines and ticks, and I'm going to go up where it says horizontal axis. I want to change something about that. So I'm going to scroll down, scroll down, and then I see min and max. So I want my minimum value to be zero because that's the theoretical smallest drop height I can have. And I do that, and immediately it shifts everything, and that looks much better. And I want to go a little bit beyond the 150, so I'm going to say, let's say, 180. And it's up to you. It doesn't matter. And in fact, that might be too much. I mean, that's a little, I'm going to go 170. Uh, whoops, I did 1170. That's not good. Okay, so i got a nice looking graph. Now we're ready to do our best fit and then get an equation from that best fit. So I'm going to click out of horizontal axis and I'm going to go now to series. So if I go to series, I can see I can change my dots, right? I can change the color if I want to. You don't have to. I can also change their size. So if you're not putting error bars, just leave them in. The big size indicates there's some uncertainty in our measurement, so that's fine. If I'm going to use error bars instead to indicate my uncertainty, I'm going to click here and go to the smallest possible point. Okay, so that depends on you. I'm going to move forward as if you're going to add error bars, but if you're not, you can ignore what I just did. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and I want to add a trend line. So if I look at these dots, it seems like the shape that they're form is suggesting is a line. So I'm going to go click trend line, and the default line they put is linear. So I don't have to do anything. If it was not a line, I could change the type of function I want to fit to it. And usually you can do power series. So it's in almost all cases either linear or power series. But by default, it is linear. Okay, that's awesome. I don't know why I did that. I don't want the data labels. My line color shows up just fine. And now I want to know the equation of this. In other words, I want the program to find the slope for me. So I don't have to actually do change in y over change in x. I, you could print it out and try to do that. I'm just going to go down where it says label right here, where it by default says none. I'm just going to go use equation. And boom, right up there is my equation. Now, this equation is in terms of a generic x. In our lab, our x variable is d. So on your lab, you would write it in terms of b and d. But here is our slope, 0.87. I also want to note that this does not give you units of slope. So you have to work that out yourself. So basically when you do slope, it's this value divided by that value. So it's centimeters divided by centimeters. And they cancel out. So it's truly just a number. But in many other cases, it'll, there'll be some units that go with it. All right, at this point, if you are not putting in error bars, you can stop. And hopefully, and then what you're going to want to eventually do is go up to copy chart and paste it into a Word doc where you have all the other information, if that's what I'm asking you to do. 
Okay, so let's talk about error bars. To do error bars is actually pretty simple in one sense, but it can be a little bit more complicated. So I can just simply click error bars, and it adds an error bars. But the size of the error bars, they go by default as a percent of your Y value, and they choose 10%. Well, we're not going to do that. We want to base our error bars on our uncertainties. And if we go back to our data, right, the, the vertical error bars, they're based on uncertainty and bounce height. Well, your bounce height has two sources of uncertainty. There is the instrument uncertainty based on how we measured it, and that was pretty small. And then there's a random error. So let's say if you do the random error for each of your uh, trials, I'm just going to make some stuff. So let's say you got 1.5 for this. 0.69 for that, uh, 2.3, 2.5, and let's say uh, 1.6. Okay, so you you did those on your data table prior. I'm just transcribing it right here, random error. So what we would I, I do like to be able to do is for this particular point, 130, I'd like to put a bar that's 1.5 above this and 1.5 below 130, and then do it for each of these. Unfortunately, Google Sheets doesn't allow that, so we're going to do a little cheat. We're going to basically take the rough average value of all these. So I'm going to say on the average our error bar is 2. I'm just going to choose a nice round number. So that's what I'm going to tell if I go back to the chart, and I go up to Edit Chart, and I go back to see, Customize, Series, scroll down, or Error Bars. I don't want a percent, I want a number, so I'm going to put Constant and I'm going to put in 2. So notice our error bars are pretty small, but notice that our line passes through all the points, including the error bars. What's left after this is how to put in min and max, and there's a separate tutorial for that. So uh, I'll leave that tutorial for you to watch if you have to add min and max lines. Otherwise, this is pretty much it. At this point, you can copy your chart and paste it into a document.